This is just one video of a multi-part course where I overview different animation software to determine which software is best for you. This is a free course and you can gain access on tunefiles.com and I also have premium courses that go deeper as well. I hope you learned something and enjoy. Adobe Animate is probably the most well-known animation software on this list. It's also one of the oldest. I believe it was first developed in 1996 under the name Future Splash. And since then it's gone through different revisions. It's gone through different names. It used to be called Flash. But ever since Flash itself has become less of a thing on the web because it used to be used for creating small interactive elements such as animations and advertisements on the web. And it still is, but it's not as widely used anymore. Adobe seemed to focus Animate more towards character animation. And that's a good thing for us who want to jump in and animate cartoons. So let's talk a little bit about what Animate is good at, what it's not good at, and if you should be investing in it. First, I would say Animate's claim to fame is the ability to do frame-by-frame -frame animation. Now, in the previous video, I talked about Moho and how that animation tool works. And Animate works similar, but it just seems easier to jump in and start animating out your different pieces of art. So if I jump in and just create a new document really quick, and I'm going to do a very, very quick demonstration here. You can see we have a blank document and you have just a blank frame right here. We could come in and I'm just going to use an oval tool for this. We'll just create a shape just like that. Now I can go to the next frame or we can insert that keyframe and then delete the object. So we have this frame and then we have a blank frame and you could come in and just keep adding blank frames like this if you wanted to. Let's say if you know for sure you want this to be a 10 frame animation, you could easily go in and do that. So here you have your ball and then you want to go to the next frame. But how do you reference that? Well, you can onion skin pretty easily. We can come in here and just enable onion skins and you can choose the range just like this. We'll just go with all the frames right now. So the blue indicates that's the original frame here. And we can come in here now on frame two if we wanted to and just, again, I'll do this very quick. Kind of go like this to indicate it's going to squish down, go to frame three. And as you can see, as I pick, you get different colors depending on the frame you're at. So you can easily come in here and just monitor how that works. And then we'll have it shoot up here. This frame. And then like this. And then we can just kind of keep going like that. Again, I'm just kind of at this point, cheesing it here just to kind of get it done. But as you can see, we can then turn this on and off and we can verify how this is going to work. We could then play this out. <laughs> it goes pretty fast. But you can see, hopefully, that frame by frame animation is just less cumbersome with Animate compared to something like Moho. And again, that's because it really was built for that in a way because of the way the keyframes work and the drawing tools and then their onion skinning. It's pretty simple and you really don't need anything advanced for frame by frame. It just works and that's good. Now, other ways you can animate with Adobe Animate, and this is how I choose to animate and what I've taught so far when it comes to animation is animating with symbols. Now, with the most recent versions of Animate, you can parent layers to each other. You may recall in the Moho video, you can set up a bone structure and link bones together. And this works in a similar way. First, let's define what a symbol is. A symbol is essentially a reusable object you can place in your library. This also means you can set up and reuse multiple character actions and all of that. But for instance, I can come over here to this character and this character himself is a symbol. And if I double click and go in there, we now have different parts or symbols for the body parts. So here we have the arm and this is going to be the bicep. Then we have the forearm and then we have the hand and then you have the torso and you have the head and then you have the hair. It's all separated out into symbols. 
And I show in my rigging course how to set this up, but it's all parented together in a way so that if I move this layer, the hand will move as well. But if I come up here and decide to move this arm right here, we can move it just like this. And it just allows you to come in and just manipulate this in a bone-like way. But it's not quite as user-friendly as something like Moho. With Moho, once you get the bone set up, you can really fly through an animation when you're more comfortable with the software. Here it's a little bit more cumbersome. And the layer parenting is a more recent addition. Before, that was not the case. You would have to actually go through and move each individual piece at a time. You would come in and you have to select all these pieces and then grab this anchor and move it to where it needs to be. And then you would then move the whole object. And then you would then just select these two pieces and then move the anchor and then move the arm. It was a real pain. So it has come a long way. But again, you're lacking the niceties of a actual bone system, including the ability to add physics or smart bones or corrections or dials or any of that. You just have your symbols. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, what are you talking about, Chad? I see a bone icon right here, and it's called the bone tool. Well, yes, you are correct. There is an actual bone tool in Animate. However, it does not operate how at least I would want it to operate, and really, it feels incredibly limited. Basically, in order for this to work, we would have to have this entire character on one single layer. And because the character is so complicated, it makes it incredibly difficult to achieve such a thing. Now you could set up separate bones. So you could set up one bone for this arm, one bone for this arm, one bone for there and there, and have all these bones working separately. But in the end, it just doesn't really seem to make a whole lot of sense. At least from my perspective, it doesn't. The bone tool has been around, I believe since 2008, when it was still called Flash. And it really hasn't evolved since then. And since they are really focusing this on character animation, I do hope Adobe looks at that tool and makes enhancements and tweaks and all that, especially given how After Effects handles certain things with the free Duik plugin. It'd be kind of nice if they looked to that for inspiration. But I digress. <laughs> My point is, you can animate with bones, but the bone tool is kind of useless in my opinion. And the symbols work fine enough, but if you are looking for a bone-like system, I would actually prefer Moho over Animate. But again, that's just my preference. If you're looking to do more frame by frame, then definitely Animate is the way to go. And if you're looking to do a hybrid of bone and frame by frame, then you might want to also consider Animate, depending on how much you want to rely on the frame by frame animation. Now, again, we've touched on the design tools and how you can do freehand leg drawings as well as the line tools and shapes. There is a library similar to Moho, and that's where all the symbols go. And you can save animations here. You can see that this particular symbol is called Chad Jump, and we have animation within this symbol. If we were to back up here, you can see he actually jumps in. And so that's actually something we can reuse at any time. We put it into the library. You can see it's right here, Chad Jump. And we can just come in here and drag and drop that onto a scene since that animation is complete. So in a way, it works like actions within Moho. You can use what is also called the frame picker if you wish. So if I were to come back out here just to my main timeline, the frame picker allows you to go in and pick certain frames from an animated symbol. If you want to go in and do that, you can by all means choose those frames graphically. And speaking of picking things, you can also build multiple scenes. And this is one thing that Animate does have over Moho, is you can create as many scenes as you want. And what a scene does is it just basically adds an additional blank document to the animation. And if you were to export this whole thing out, it'll go scene by scene. So it'll render scene one, scene two, scene three, and so on. So if you wanted to start, for instance, in the backstage, he does his thing. We could then cut to an exterior shot 
of another building that could be scene two, and then you could create scene three, and then you could go to that new building, and everything that you're doing for this one episode or production would be within one file versus having to spread it across multiple files or multiple scenes like you do with something like Moho. So that is also a good thing about Animate. Now for a bad thing, <laughs> or I wouldn't say bad, but for something I prefer over other software, Moho works within a 3D space. I talked about that in my previous video. Animate does not. You can't push things into the background. There is no depth. It's just 2D. There is a camera system built into the application. You'll see we have a camera right here. And if we click on it, we get a camera layer and it allows us to move things around and we can zoom in and that's all nice and good, but really, it doesn't provide a lot of depth compared to other applications that actually work in 3D space like Moho or even After Effects. So that's something to keep in mind. There is a camera system, but it's mostly just to kind of get your shot centered or composed in a way that you like. There really is no depth. You would have to go in and do all of that manually or perhaps seek out a third party script. But with that downfall, there's also a good thing about this. If you are going to be going the Animate route, there's a good chance you're going to be investing in a Creative Cloud membership. And with that comes a whole bunch of applications that you can use, such as Photoshop, After Effects, Audition, Encoder, Premiere, the list goes on and on and on. You can export from here, you can bring your animations as PNGs or videos into After Effects, create some awesome compositing effects with that, bring it into Premiere, do some editing, get it trimmed up, do your audio in Audition. It's a really nice package if you want to go that route. And that's not saying you can't use Moho for animation and then bring your Moho animations into Premiere and After Effects and do all that. It's just that if you're going to invest in the package, it all comes bundled as one thing. So you wouldn't have to purchase Animate and then seek out another application for video editing. It's all within your membership. So that is another benefit of Animate and learning that software. Also, it's been around for a very long time. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. So if you learn it, you'll be also learning something that's pretty popular within the industry of web animation. And so that's also something to keep in mind. And just one more note, you can do what is called action scripting within Animate. Action scripting is essentially just a programming language which allows you to create interactive elements and all sorts of different things. It was a huge thing back in the mid 2000s for sure. Lots of games were created with action script, interactive elements and all that. And you can use that for animation if you wish as well. I myself don't know much about action script. I've never really dived into that part of animate. I've always just gone with the animation aspects of it. But if you are inclined to learn programming, there's all sorts of materials out there for you to learn action script if you wish to do certain things that go beyond just the basic tools and features of animate. But with all that said, I do recommend animate if you're looking to do frame by frame animation or you're looking to do a hybrid of frame by frame animation along with some interpolating or tweening. And if you're not quite sure you want to use bones, if you find them a little bit too constricting, you might also want to consider animate because you can do bone like movements, but you do have a lot of control and creative freedom when it comes to going in, placing down a keyframe and just drawing out what you want to see on screen. It's a little bit harder to do that with something like Moho or even Character Animator in After Effects. So if you're looking for frame by frame animation or a more middle ground, Animate is a good way to go.